Wow. <laughs> I have to say it like Kirk said. Um, this is not my speech yet. <laughs> I just, um, um, I guess I'll start my speech. <laughs> uh, first of all, since I'm 95 years old, and my ring presenter, Ray Park, is almost 97, I want everybody to relax because we have Dr. Biden with us from the Mayo Clinic here. Uh, we thought we'd play it safe, just in case. Ray and I have been together for 73 years, and he has had a lot to do with my success in life. I consider him my best friend and my brother. Thank you, Ray, for being here tonight. I know they uh, went to a lot of work to bring all the relatives and friends, which I really appreciate. I'd like to congratulate Kirk, Matt, and Mike I'm honored to share this night with you. Mike, you always made me feel so welcome when I would come back east to race. My speech shouldn't be too long because most of the people I have to thank are dead. <laughs> uh, but I truly can't express words what this has meant to me. I grew up loving to drive. I started at seven years old with a cart that was pulled by a goat that I, had that I had bought from my uncle for $4. I drove farm equipment at a summer job at 10. I delivered groceries on a scooter with a sidecar at 11. At 12, they trusted me to drive the church bus to get the kids to Sunday school. I took my time taking them home because I didn't want to attend church after because my dad was the preacher. I didn't want to listen to him. At 13, I had a job with the railroad for two summers, operating a rail car that hauled the men to their railroad sites where they were installing new ties and tracks. The first year, I was the brakeman. The second year, I was the main operator. I remember that year at 14, getting paid foreman's wages of 60 cents an hour, while the workers only got 40 cents. Then I bought my first car with the money that I'd earned. I was just starting eighth grade and was the only person in school who had a car, including the teachers and the principal. <laughs> <laughs> it was a nice car, too. It was a 1930 Model A that cost me $110. I was pretty popular because everybody wanted rides, of course. At 15, for a, short time, for a short time, I was employed at a funeral home and drove an ambulance and a hearse. After eighth grade, I was living in Portland, and I drove a milk truck. I had to start my route at 2.30 in the morning because I had to be to school by 8.30. When I kept dozing off in class, the principal told me to go home if I wanted to sleep, so I never went back. World War II had just ended when I entered my first race in 1945. I was 17, and I borrowed my dad's 40 Hudson. He was a preacher and had never been to a race before, and after seeing all the cars go into the first corner in a cloud of dust, he went under the grandstands and prayed the whole race. <laughs> I'm not sure if he was praying for me or for the car. But it must have helped because I finished 12th out of about 40 cars. I went on racing in the Northwest, and in 1949, I won eight out of 12 races. My first adult job was driving tow trucks. Later, I drove log trucks. And later in my lumber business, I flew my own airplane. So many people have helped me through the years, far too many to mention. But the one person that stands out for me is Bill France Sr. I met him at the Pan American Road Race in Mexico in May of 1950. He was there with Curtis Turner to run the race. My neighbor had bought me a 50 Olds for that five-day, 2,132-mile race through Mexico. I found a sponsor to pay the $600 entry fee. The car was stocked, except that we were allowed to put a 35-gallon gas tank in the trunk. We started with four spare tires, a few hand wrenches in the glove box. 
Did I mention I'm not a mechanic? <laughs> no big toolboxes. Bill noticed me uh, because I was competitive throughout the race with he and Curtis. I think out of 132 entries at 22 years old, I ended up winning the race. There were other NASCAR drivers there too. Red Byron, Raymond Parks, Fonnie and Bob Flock, and Johnny Mance. It was, if we could really think about it, that standing there then, there was five of us that are in the Hall of Fame. I'm very proud of that. Uh, I'm sorry that they're no longer with us to celebrate tonight. After the race, Bill invited me to come to the first Southern 500 at Darlington, which was four months later. We drove the car from Portland to Darlington, raced 500 miles, and then we drove it back home. That was quite a show with 75 cars in her. Back then, we did not have a car hauler, and to put things in perspective, the total purse was 25,000 with 5,000 to win. To me, that was a big deal. That's why I was there. In 1951, we raced at the Detroit Fairgrounds for another $5,000 purse, plus a Packard convertible. I really wanted that convertible, so. But uh, I ended up in a seven-car crash, and most of the races back then were on dirt, and this track was exceptionally dusty. Bill France Jr., a teenager at the time, drove the water truck for that race. About 30 years later, Bill wrote me a letter and sent a magazine article with a picture showing me sitting on the ground under the guardrail. He must have felt bad because he said he should have probably put more water on the, down on the truck. In 1954, Bill Sr. asked me to come back east and run the last half of the season. So I moved my family to Daytona. From there, my friendship with Bill grew. I think I was one of the first drivers to do public relations for NASCAR. Bill liked the way I presented myself. I was a pretty sharp dresser, I thought back then. No coveralls. On my occasion, on most occasions, he flew me to various tracks ahead of the race to do radio and TV to promote the races. I'd run the race, and then sometimes he would fly me back home. One trip back to Daytona, we circled over a swamp next to the airport, and Bill said, this is where I'm going to build the Daytona International Speedway. I thought to myself then, these guys thinking really big time. On some trips, he would open up the blueprints, study them as we flew over our next destination and he had asked me to steer the plane. I'd also like to mention Ken Clapp. I've known Ken since he was 12 years old. He is responsible for keeping NASCAR alive on the West Coast. He has been my biggest supporter since the day I met him, and I know he spent many years pulling for me to receive this honor. I love you, Kenny. He couldn't make it tonight because he's home with COVID. I was given a couple nicknames. Lee Petty called me Hershey, He really liked me, made me feel like family. And Dale Earnhardt Sr. called me older than dirt. Uh, so how could you not love that guy? Richard Petty's recommendation to me was that I talk about myself and not everybody else, which is not easy for me, so I put together some quick facts. I raced twice on the beach at Daytona. In 1954, I finished sixth in points, running only half the season. Lee Petty and I finished first and second in the last six races that year, splitting the win three times. While Richard, Maurice, and Dale, they were all playing in a sandbox. I raced three generations of Petties and was looking forward to racing Adam. I think Adam would be very proud of you, Kyle, and the things you've accomplished in his honor. I've been on the Kyle Petty ride five times. I won 14 races at the Riverside, California road course track. I was voted most popular driver in the Winston West Series 12 years in a row by my peers. 
I won a race in a Jaguar. It was on a baseball diamond near Baltimore and was scored as a win in the NASCAR International Division. As a total surprise, I was given NASCAR's Award of Excellence in 1994 by Bill French Jr. at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel during the annual awards banquet. I was selected one of NASCAR's 50 greatest drivers in 1998 for NASCAR's 50th anniversary. I raced at Tucson in a NASCAR k &N race at 90 years old, and I played the national anthem on my trombone before running to my car and climbing in to start the race. <laughs> My wife's glad I didn't bring my trombone tonight. <laughs> oh, and I should mention, Bill McAnally, Richard Childress have both offered me a car for a race when I reach the magic number of 100. And I hope they both stay healthy. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to Japan three times, promoting NASCAR once and racer twice. I raced in Le Mans twice, once in 1976 in a cup car, 74 Dodge Charger. Bill France Jr. was there with us. Second time in 1982 in a modified Camaro sports car. Oh, by the way, I'm really happy about this. Jim France informed me that I'm going to join them as a member of their new team this year. Uh, Not as a driver. <laughs> Maybe I'll be there. I might scare them other guys that are going to drive the car. I ran a race, NASCAR race, in Australia. I've always tried to help people. I've been very fortunate in my life, and I enjoy helping others. Family is very important to me. I have five wonderful kids who were all involved in racing in one way or another. We all worked at jobs during the week and raced on weekends. I've been very fortunate being married to my sweet wife for the last 25 years. She's an architect, a carpenter, fix anything around the house, and a great cook. She's younger than most of my kids, and they have nicknamed her Wicked Stepmom. <laughs> I'm such a lucky guy to have found her, and I shall love you forever, Sherry. I have had a very happy life, and this induction, of course, is more than icing on the cake. Thank you all to those who helped me along the way. And there were many. To all those who cheered me on, and to all those I ran against. Because without any of you, I would not be standing here to enjoy this honor. I have thoroughly enjoyed my 73-year relationship with NASCAR. I would like to sincerely thank all my family and my great friends who have come from near and far to celebrate with me tonight. I am very humbled. We have shared so many good memories and so many good times together, and so here's to many more. For anybody wanting to read to, or want to know more about my life, you'll want to read my book. It hasn't been published yet. In fact, it hasn't even been written. <laughs> but it's on my bucket list. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just happy that I can be here and alive for this honor. Thank you all. NASCAR Hall of Fame Executive Director, Winston Kelly.